Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, dear people of God. You are welcome to the Daily Fountain devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion for today being Friday, the 22nd day of April, 2022. Let us pray. Thank you, Almighty God, for giving us the privilege to see another beautiful day like this and for all you have done for us. As we meditate on your word this morning, we pray that you breathe your breath upon us and through your word, let our strength be renewed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The topic to be considered this morning is titled, His Desires Are Toward Me. His Desires Are Toward Me. And the passage for today is the Song of Solomon, chapter 7, from verse 10 to chapter 8, verse 4. I read, I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth to the feed. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine has budded, whether the grape blossoms are open, and the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes give off a fragrance, and at our gates are pleasant fruits, all manner, new and old, which I have laid off for you, my beloved. Oh, that you are like my brother, who nursed at my mother's breast. If I should find you outside, I will kiss you. I will not be dispersed. I will lead you and bring you into the house of my mother. She who used to instruct me, I will cause you to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranates. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Here ends the reading. His desires are toward me. The Song of Solomon is a series of love poems, for the most part in the form of songs addressed by a woman to a man and from the man to the woman. These songs have often been interpreted by the Jews as a picture of relationship between God and his people and by Christians as a picture of relationship between Christ and the church. But by way of reminder, this book is not mainly a romantic poem between uh, just a man or a woman. The subject matter of this book is Jesus Christ and his bride. It is a song that speaks of this beautiful love between Jesus Christ and his bride, the, 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 the Christians, the believers. So with this in mind, we will consider the passage before us this morning, Song of Solomon chapter 7, from verse 10 to chapter 8, verse 4. This passage we just read expresses the affections shared by two lovers. They have spent time together and they love each other and they desired to be together. Verse 10 of the passage we read this morning that we can also take as our anchor verse says, I am my beloved and his desire are toward me. I want us to, to take note of four distinct aspects of the statement made by the woman 
in this verse in response to the affection, to the love that has been shown to her by her lover. And the first aspect I want us to take note is that this statement is personal. The, the pronoun used by this woman are personal pronouns. I, my. Just as the woman here personalizes our beloved, so we must personalize Jesus Christ, the lover of our soul. Let me tell you something. Christ will, will be of no benefit to you if, you if you refuse to claim him personally. No one can be saved on someone else's uh, behalf. It is something that must be done individually. It is not a matter of being born into a Christian home. It is not a matter of being a priest's wife or a priest's child. It is not even a matter of being a priest. What we are saying is a matter of encountering Jesus Christ personally. And Jesus has made it clear. He has promised that he will receive anyone that is ready or willing to come to him. He said in the later part of John chapter 6, verse 37, that anyone who comes to him, he will by no means cast out. So it is left for individual to come. It is left for individual to embrace Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter your position. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter who you are. What you need is just to come and embrace the love of Jesus Christ. The second aspect that I want us to take note of in the statement made by this woman in verse 10 is that the statement is present. The woman did not say she was. She did not say she will be. She declared boldly, I am. That shows right now, at present. And the same can be said of every child of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Salvation of course. The moment a person repents of his or her sin and places his or her faith in the finished work of Christ. Today we still have many believers that still feel guilty of their past. It's not supposed to be. Immediately we, are, we give our life to Christ, we are new creation. Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man, any woman, any boy, any girl is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things have passed away. He has become new. Because if we continue to feel guilty of our past, this will hinder us from having an intimate relationship with Christ. It will hinder us from coming boldly to the throne of grace. It will rob us of the blessing we're supposed to acquire from Jesus Christ. Another thing to be noted in this statement is that it is possessive. This reveals the intimate personal relationship between the two lovers. There is a relationship between these two lovers. They have spent so many times together. They belong to each other. This is the kind of relationship we have to have with Jesus Christ the moment we receive him as our Lord and personal Savior. Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, that we were literally purchased from the slave market of sin by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and that we no longer belong to ourselves. And that's why it amazes me today when I hear people saying they can do anything they like with their lives, that they, they own their lives. No, it's not so, particularly for a believer, particularly for somebody that has claimed to, to have Christ. You, are, you don't own your life. You can't do anything you like with your life. The Bible says, don't you know that your body is the temple of Holy Spirit? So as this woman uh, declared that 
she belongs to our lover, we also must be able to declare in everything we do that we belong to Jesus Christ. The last aspect I want us to consider is the fact that this statement made by this woman in verse 10 of our passage this morning is pass passionate. The term beloved is a term of endowment. The lover has been redeemed by our king, just as the saved have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. If I may ask this morning, is not Christ beloved by you? We see before the passage we read this morning, especially from chapter 6, verse 4, to chapter 7, verse 9, we see how the man in this passage reveals the depth of his love through his magnificent praises. Then after then, the woman's focus changes. In the security of the amazing love of her lover, she loses all awareness of self-interest, and she sees only him. She no longer cares about what is us. She cares only that she belongs to him and that his desires are towards her. That is what is supposed to be our focus as believers. We must not see anything as as us again, in as much we belong to Jesus Christ. And that's why this woman can boldly say, I am my beloved and his desire is towards me. I wonder where our own heart are today. As believers, do you have that concern that you belong to Jesus Christ and that he passionately desire you? That enablement. Christ desire us more than we even desire him. I want us to think about his death on the cross. It was indeed a clear demonstration of his love and desire that made him to die for us, not minding the shame, the pain he, he, he had to pass through. And so we have a responsibility to uphold this love and to reciprocate this love that God has freely shown us through Jesus Christ. If I may ask, do you really love Christ? There are people of God, I don't want you to be quick to answer that question because today many people claim they love Christ and their behaviors, their, their actions are totally contrary to the word of God. Of course, the word love has become the most misused word in the world today. Love will be more meaningful in actions than in words. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved. And the next thing that follows is what God did because of the love he had for the world. And the Bible says he gave. That's action. So if you are claiming you love God, then it more shows in the way you live your life. Of course, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. It should be noted that it is contradiction in terms for an individual to say he or she loves Christ only for his or her heart to still be in the world. True love for God compels the believers to obey not just part of the Bible, but the whole. For some believers, the commandment of Christ through Bible governs their actions, their taste, relationships, possession, lifestyle, conversation, and so on. Indeed, the Word of God controls every area of their lives, including where they walk, where they go, what they wash, what they say, and what they set as priority in life. They will, without any apology, be ready to say no to persecution, to threat, to persuasion, to prayers, to temptation that run contrary to the word of God because they cherish him as their Lord. They will not mind the cost they have to pay, the loss they can suffer, 
as well as the shame they have to bear for his name's sake. Are you sure you belong to this group? Are you ready to forgo all your rights just because you love Christ? If we know that his desire towards us, what else really matter? See, no matter what you face in life, if you can have that assurance, if you can come to that reality that Jesus desires you, then you'll be free from all the pains of this world. This is why Apostle Paul say, said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, when you are sure of the love of Christ for you, you will be crucified to this world. It means your attachment to this world will be dissolved and your affection will be set in heaven. And nothing will move you in this world. Of course, this world is not our own. It's not our own. Even the Bible says, yes, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We need to realize that we belong to the world's most powerful sovereign and it desires us. So it will protect us from all those that are planning evil against us. He has the power to do so, since his desire is always towards us. We belong to him. We sh why should we fear what man can do to us? Apostle Paul says, if, if God be for us, who can be against us? Since Jesus' desires is towards us, we should find a perfect contentment in him. Why should we care if those of this world either love or hate us? See, if you can truly enter into the wonder of belonging to him and his incredible desire for you, it will give you great peace and perfect courage in your witness to the world. As we go on in our Christian race, we must not forget that his desires are always towards us. And when our own desires meet with this, it is then we can receive all the blessing he has for us and it is then our appetite for the world and his glory we die. We can then live in the new creation realities. Jesus Christ desires daily communion with you. Even in death, Jesus still desires us because he wants us to be where he is. I don't know whether that is also your own desire. Do you really want to reign with him at the end of this uh, world? When you have such desire, you will be able to say like the, like the woman in verse 11 of our passage this morning, that come, my beloved, you will have the zeal to walk with Christ, that you may receive counsel from him, that you may receive instruction and comfort from him, and make known your need without any interruption. It should be noted that communion with Christ is what all, everybody that are holy, all that are made holy earnestly breathe after. Everybody that claim that, that are genuinely saved, we always want to be, to have communion with Jesus Christ. There are people of God, search your heart, come unto him, so that your soul will be satisfied. He freely offer us salvation. He freely offer us the bounty and goodness of his love because his desires are towards us. Will you determine this morning to live for him? No matter what you are passing through, he knows about it. He knows what he is doing. He has already started working on that problem. If only you can wait and continue to stay with him. If only you can continue with your communion with him. If only you will not leave him and follow the word. And I pray God will continue to help you in Jesus name. I want us to know no one can do it with his own strength. That's why we need the grace of God daily as we go on in our Christian journey.
And I pray the grace of God will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us. There is no doubt that your desires are towards us. Help us to see nothing else in this world except you and grant us the grace to live for you till the end. For we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do have a wonderful day. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.